Hello, students. Let's continue our discussion on uh, uh, trigonometry. Let's have a look at the next question, which is question number 18. Okay. Now, the value of uh, tan 1 degree plus tan 89 degree is. Okay. So here, tan 1 degree. I will write uh, tan 1 degree as uh, sine 1 degree divided by cos 1 degree plus uh, tan 89 degree is there. I'll write that as sine 89 degree divided by cos 89 degree. Okay. So now I will take the LCM of these two. LCM is uh, cos 1 degree into cos 89 degree. Okay. Then the numerator will be sine 1 degree into cos 89 degree plus sine 89 degree into cos 1. Degree. Okay. That's equal to look at the numerator now. So in the numerator, In the numerator, sine 1 degree cos 89 degree plus sine 89 degree into cos 1 degree. It looks like sine A cos B plus cos A sine B, right? Sine A cos B plus cos A sine B is equal to sine A plus B. So that means you are going to get uh, sine A plus B, sine 1 degree plus 89 degree, which is equal to sine 9 degree divided by. In the denominator, I will write uh, cos 89 degree, cos 1 degree into cos 89 degree is there. Cos 89 can be written as uh, sine 1 degree. Okay. Then uh, sine 90 degree is 1. Denominator, I will multiply and divide by 2. So 2 into sine 1 degree into cos 1 degree. That will give you, in the, uh, since I have multiplied the denominator by 2, I have to multiply the numerator also by 2. Denominator 2 sin 1 degree into cos 1 degree, it will be sin 2 sin theta cos theta, which is equal to sin 2 theta, that will give you sin 2. So the answer is uh, 2 by sin 2 degree. Okay. Then let's have a look at the next question. Okay. 2 by sin 2 degree, which means the fourth option. Now let's go to the next question. If tan x is equal to 3 by 2, 3 by 4, and x is in between pi and 3 pi by 2. x is between pi and 3 pi by 2 means it is in third quadrant. Then the value of cos x by 2 is. Okay. So tan x is equal to 3 by 4. Let me consider a right angle triangle here. I'll call this angle as x. Tan x is equal to 3 by 4. So then this will be equal to 5. Okay. So now tan x is 3 by 4. What will be the value of cos x? Cos x is equal to 4 by 5. I just sent by hypotenuse. But remember that uh, x is in between pi and 3 pi by 2. So third quadrant where tan is positive. However, cos is negative. So it will be minus 4 by 5. So cos x is equal to minus 4 by 5. Now we want cos x by 2. So for that, we know one formula. Cos x by 2 can be written as square root of 1 plus cos x divided by 2. 1 plus cos theta is 2 cos square theta by 2. Divide 2, 2 gets cancelled. Root of cos square theta by 2 is cos theta by 2. Here I should write plus or minus. And now x is in between pi and 3 pi by 2. x is greater than pi but less than 3 pi by 2. Uh, students observe here, x is between pi and 3 pi by 2. So now if I divide this inequality by 2, I'm going to get pi by 2 less than x by 2 less than 3 pi by 4, which means x by 2 is between pi by 2 and 3 pi by 4. Pi by 2 means 90 degree, 3 pi by 4 is 135 degree. So x by 2 is in second quarter. Therefore, cos x by 2 must be negative. Hence, I will write uh, a minus here. Minus root of 1 plus cos x by 2. That's equal to 
minus root of 1 plus cos x. Cos x is minus 4 by 5. So it will be 1 minus 4 by 5 divided by 2. Okay, divided by 2 we have. So that will become minus root of 5 minus 4, 1 by 5 divided by 2. So we are going to get minus 1 by root 10 as the answer. Minus 1 by root 10, which is the first option. Now let's have a look at uh, this equation. This problem, 25th question. Cos 25 degree, cos square 33 degree minus cos square 57 degree divided by sine 21 minus cos 21. Okay. So what I do is, I'll write uh, cos square 33 degree as it is. And cos square 57 degree is there, no? I can write that as uh, so sine square 33 degree. How? You know, cos 90 minus theta is equal to sine theta. I'll write 57 degree as 90 minus 33. 90 minus 33 is 57. Cos square 57 degree or cos 57 degree is equal to cos of 90 minus 33, which is equal to sine 33. This will become sine square 33 degree divided by. Now, sine 21 is there. Sine 21 can be written as cos of 69, cos 69 degree minus, I'll keep this as it is, cos 21 degree, okay? How did I get 69 degree? Again, 21 degree, I wrote it as 90 minus 69. 90 minus 69 will give you 21 degree, right? So sine theta can be written as uh, cos 90 minus theta, okay? So now in the numerator, look at this cos square 30 degree minus sine square 33 degree. Here I am using the formula cos square a minus sine square a. Cos square a minus sine square a is equal to cos 2a, which you know. So cos square 33 degree minus sine square 33 degree will become cos 66 degree. Cos 2a, 2 into 33, that is 60 degree. 66 degree. Now in the denominator, cos 69 minus cos 21. For that, I'll have to use the formula cos c minus cos d. Let me write here cos c minus cos d. For this, you know the formula, you know? Yes, you're right. Minus 2 sine c plus d by 2 into sine c minus d by 2. Okay. Cos c minus cos d is equal to minus 2 sine c plus d by 2 into sine c minus d by 2. That will give you minus 2 sine C plus D, 69 plus 21, which is 90, by 2, that will give you 45 degree into sine C minus D by 2. 69 minus 21, that will give you 48, by 2, that is 24 degree. Okay. Now, meanwhile, cos 66 can also be written as sine 24 degree. Cos 90 minus theta, 66 is 90 minus 24, cos 90 minus 24 is equal to sine 24. So here in the denominator, minus 2 into sine 45 degree, that is 1 by root 2, into sine 24 degree. That's equal to, here sine 24 gets cancelled, minus 2 by root 2, that will be minus 1 by root 2. Minus 1 by root 2, which means first option is the correct answer. Okay. Now let us look at uh, 27th question. If cos x plus cos y is equal to 4 by 5 and cos x minus cos y is 2 by 7, then what is the value of 14 tan x minus y by 2 plus 5 cot x plus y by 2? Okay, look at the first equation there. What they have given? Cos x plus cos y is equal to 4 by 5. Okay, so here I will use cos c plus cos d formula. Cos c plus cos d is equal to 2 cos c plus d by 2 into cos c minus d by 2. 2 cos c plus d by 2, that is x plus y by 2, into cos c minus d by 2, x minus y by 2, that's equal to 4 by 5. Then, another equation they have given, what they have given, cos x minus cos y is equal to, how much they have given? 2 by 7. Cos x minus cos y is equal to, 2 by 7. So now use cos c minus cos d. Cos c minus cos d, that is equal to minus 2 sine c plus d by 2, that is x plus y by 2, into c minus d by 2, which means x minus y by 2. That's equal to 2 by 7. Okay. Now let's have a look at 
Now I'll divide these equations. I'll divide this, this equation. Let me call this as equation one and this as equation two. I'm going for equation one divided by equation two. Let us see what we get. Equation one by equation two. If I do this, here two, two gets canceled. So we'll have minus cos x plus y by two divided by sine x plus y by two. That will give you cot x plus y by two into cos x minus y by two divided by sine x minus y by two. Again, that will give you cot x minus y by two. That's equal to four by five divided by two by seven. So now uh, here minus cot x plus y by two. Look at uh, what we want. We want an answer in terms of uh, cot x plus y by two and tan x minus y by two. So what I will do is the first thing that I do is I will take this question down because I don't have enough space here. Okay, and then uh, I want the answer in terms of cot x plus y by two and tan x minus y by two. For that reason, I am going to write this cot x, plus, x minus y by 2 as 1 by tan x minus x minus y divided by 2. That's equal to RH is what happens here. 2, 2 gets cancelled. 14 by 5. We get this 7 will come up. 7 into 2, 14. 14 by 5. Now cross multiply. So we will get uh, minus 5 cot x plus y by 2 is equal to 14 into tan x minus y by 2. I am bringing 5 to LHS and taking this tan x minus y by 2 to RHS. So, this take this to RHS, we get 14 tan x minus y by 2 plus, here we have minus 5 cot x plus y by 2, I am taking it to RHS, so it will become plus 5 cot x plus y by 2, the sum is equal to 0. So, 0 is the answer, which is the first option. Oh. So, now let us have a look at uh, this question. value of sine 20 degree into sine 40 degree, sine 60 degree, etc. Uh, sorry, sine 20, sine 40, sine 60, sine 80. The answer is 3 by 16. It's a standard result. If you can, you remember it. I advise you to remember it. Anyway, now I am going to prove. Uh, similarly, cos 20, cos 40, cos 60, cos 80. That's product will be equal to 1 by 16. Remember those two. Out. So anyway, now I will prove this. Uh, sin 20, sin 40, sin 60. In that sin 60 value we know, let us substitute that. Sin 60 is root 3 by 2. Remaining things I will write as it is. Sin 20 into sin 80 I will write first. Then I will write sin 40. Okay. Now that is equal to root 3 by 2 into sin 20 into sin 80. Here I will use one formula. Sin A sin. What is sin A sin B? Sin A sin B is equal to minus 1 by 2 into cos a plus b plus cos a minus b. This formula you should know. Okay. So, one minus 1 by 2 into cos a plus b into cos a minus b. Use that formula. Minus 1 by 2 into cos a plus b. 20 plus 8. That is 100. Uh, sorry. Here I have made a mistake. Cos a plus b minus cos a minus b. Minus cos a minus b. 20 minus 80, that is uh, minus 60, but cos of minus 60 is same as cos 60, you know. Okay. Cos of minus theta is cos theta itself into sin 40. So, root 3 by 2 into minus 1 by 2, that will become root 3 minus root 3 by 4 into cos 100, I will keep it as it is, minus cos 60 is there, whose value is 1 by 2 into sin 40. So now take that uh, sine 40 degree inside. So when I take it inside, uh, we are going to get minus root 3 by 4 into cos 100 into sine 40 minus 1 by 2 into sine 40. Okay. 
that's equal to minus root 3 by 4 into cos 100 into sin 40. It looks like cos A sin B. So let me write a formula for that also. Cos A sin B, that's equal to 1 by 2 into cos A sin B is equal to 1 by 2 into sin A plus B minus sin A minus B is the formula. Students, uh, you should remember all this formula. Okay, so this will give you one by two into sine a plus b, hundred plus forty, that is one forty, minus sine a minus b, hundred minus forty, sixty, minus one by two, sine forty three. Okay, now I will take this one by two out. Huh? So here we are going to get uh, minus root three by eight. Huh? into sin 140, sin 140 can also be written as sin 40 because 180 minus 40 I can write, sin 180 minus theta is equal to sin theta. Minus sin 60 is root 3 by 2 minus, see 1 by 2 I have taken out, uh, sin 40 I will write as this. So now the sin 40 gets cancelled. So we have minus root 3 by 8 uh, into minus root 3 by 2, minus root 3 into minus root 3 that will give you 3, denominator 8 into 2 that is equal to 16, 3 by 16 is the answer. This is the standard result, the standard formula you should remember. Okay. So now, the next question, question number 30. The value of 1 plus cos pi by 8 uh, into 1 plus cos 3 pi by 8 into 1 plus cos 5 pi by 8 into 1 plus cos 7 pi by 8 is. So I'll keep this uh, 1 plus cos pi by 8 as it is. Similarly, 1 plus cos 3 pi by 8 as it is. Then uh, here, 5 pi by 8 is there now. I can write 5 pi by 8 as pi minus 3 pi by 8. 5 pi by 8 can be written as pi minus 3 by 8, 3 pi by 8. And similarly, 7 pi by 8 is there. I can write that as pi minus pi by 8 because then it will give you 7 pi by 8. Okay. So then 1 plus cos pi by 8 into 1 plus cos 3 pi by 8. This looks like uh, cos 180 minus theta, cos pi minus theta. Cos pi minus theta is equal to minus cos theta. So this will become 1 minus cos 3 pi by 8. Similarly, this will be 1 minus cos pi by 8. So now here, 1 plus cos pi by 8 into 1 minus cos pi by 8. That means a plus b into a minus b. That will give you a square minus b square. So that is going to be 1 minus cos square pi by 8. Similarly, here also 1 minus cos square 3 pi by 8. Okay. 1 minus cos square theta is sine square theta. So sine square pi by 8 into sine square 3 pi by 8. That's equal to. This looks like sine square A into sine square B. Sin A sin B formula I have to use. Sin A sin B is equal to, already in the previous problem I told you, sin A sin B is equal to minus 1 by 2 into cos A plus B minus cos A minus B. Cos A plus B, pi by 2, pi by 8 plus 3 pi by 8, that will be 4 pi by 8. 4 pi by 8 means pi by 2 minus cos A minus B, pi by 8 minus 3 pi by 8. That will give you minus 2 pi by 8. In other words, minus pi by 4. Cos of minus pi by 4 is same as cos pi by 4. Whole square is there. So it will be 1 by 4 into this is 0 cos pi by 2. Cos pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. Minus 1 by root 2 here. Whole square 1 by 2. So that will give you 1 by 8. Fourth option is the correct answer. 1 by 8. Now, uh, let's have a look at uh, question number 31. A triangle ABC is right angle at C, then tan A by tan B is equal to. Let us draw a right angle triangle. This is right angled at A, they have given, at C, they have given. So, I will call this as C, let this be A and B. Okay. Now, from this, let us see what is tan A plus tan B. In any triangle ABC, the angles ABC, capital letter ABC indicate the angle ABC. Then uh, the side opposite to those angles are denoted by small ABC. So these are ABC, small ABC. 
Now tan EA is equal to opposite by hypotenuse. So that means A by B. Opposite by adjacent so. And tan B. Here tan B. So that is B by B. Now take LCM. LCM is AB. Numerator will be A square plus B square. This is right angle triangle. So by Pythagoras theorem. A square plus B square is C square divided by AB. C square by AB. Fourth option is the right answer. Let's have a look at uh, question number 34. The value of tan 40 degree plus tan 20 degree plus root 3 tan 20 into tan 40 is equal to. See, you know this formula tan A plus B is equal to tan A plus tan B divided by 1 minus tan A tan B. Now from this, I'll cross multiply. This is one minus tan A tan B is there in the denominator. I'll take the LHS. Then we are going to get tan A plus B into one minus tan A tan B is equal to tan A plus tan B. Okay, tan A plus tan B is equal to tan A plus B. This is the formula we have. Tan A plus tan B is equal to tan A plus B into 1 minus tan A tan B. Now here we have tan 40 degree plus tan 20 degree plus root 3 into tan 40 degree into tan 20 degree. Now, for these two, I want to use this formula. Tan A plus tan. That's equal to tan A plus B. 40 plus 20. That will give me tan 60. Into 1 minus tan A tan B. That means 1 minus tan 40 degree into tan 20 degree. Plus root 3 into tan 40 degree into tan 20 degree. Okay. What is the value of tan 60 degree? And 60, yes, root 3 into 1 minus tan 40 into tan 20 plus root 3 into tan 40 degree into tan 20. Bring this root 3 inside. We get root 3 minus root 3 tan 40 into tan 20 plus root 3 into tan 40 degree into tan 20. That's equal to, so this root 3 tan 40 tan 20, those two gets cancelled, root 3 will remain. That's the answer. Root 3, which is the fourth option. Okay. The 37th question, the minimum value of sorry, minimum value of 3 cos x plus 4 sin x plus 8 you know this formula, the range of A cos x plus B sin x plus C is minus root of A square plus B square plus C, comma, root of A square plus B square plus C. So, this is the minimum value, minus root a square plus b square plus c, and the maximum value is root of a square plus b square plus c. Dear students, please remember this formula, a very important one. Um, we are going to use this on many occasions, even in applications of derivatives also we need this. The range of a sin x, a cos x plus b sin x plus c, or a, cos x, a sin x plus b cos x plus c, there also it is applicable. The minimum value is minus root a square plus b square plus c, and the maximum value is root a square plus b square. Let's see. Okay. Here the question is mu value. So minus root of a square plus b square. That is 9 plus 16 plus 8. 9 plus 16 25. Root of 25 is 5. So you're going to get minus 5 plus 8, which is equal to 3. Fourth option. Okay. Now, in any triangle ABC, the value of cos square A plus cos square B plus cos square C is. So, any triangle ABC they have given, so you can make some substitution. Put A is equal to B is equal to C is equal to 60 degree. Okay, any triangle. 
So any triangle ABC means I have to substitute values for ABC such that uh, their sum is equal to 180 degree. So what do I do? I will choose uh, 60, 60, 60. Okay. So now, mm, what happens to given expression? Given expression has cos square A plus cos square B plus cos square C. I am putting A equal to B equal to C equal to 60. Cos 60 is 1 by 2. So cos square 60, 1 by 4. Similarly, cos square 60, 1 by 4, 1 by 4. This sum is equal to 3 by 4. Out. So now I will substitute the same in all the options. Look at the first option. In the first option, if I put X, uh, A as uh, 60, cos 60, I'm going to get 1 minus 2 into cos 60 is 1 by 2. 2, 2 gets cancelled. 1 minus 1, this will give you 0. We want the answer 3 by 4. So first option gets eliminated. Look at the second. Cos A, cos B, cos C. I'm putting A, B, C as 60, 60, 60. So cos 60 into cos 60 into cos 60, 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 into 1 by 2, that will give you 1 by 8. But we want 3 by 4, so this option is also eliminated. Then, look at the third. 1 minus cos A, 1 by 2 into cos B, 1 by 2 into cos C, 1 by 2. So 1 minus 1 by 8, that's equal to 7 by 8. So we want 3 by 4, so that cannot be the answer. Third option is also ruled out. If first, second, third are not correct, then obviously fourth must be the right answer. Okay, so fourth option is the correct answer. Anyway, we can cross check now. Put A, B, C equal to 60, 60, 60. Here we are going to get 1 minus 1 by 2 into, sorry, 1 minus 2 into 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 into 1 by 2. 2, 2 gets cancelled. So we are going to get 1 minus 1 by 4, which is equal to 3 by 4. We want the given expression is also 3 by 4. So this is the correct answer. Now you might think, sir, suppose if uh, more than one option gives you 3 by 4, then what? Then what you have to do is you have to consider another, another triangle. Instead of 60, 60, 60, you can take 45, 45, 90. Then substitute in that way, you can get the answer. Or 30, 60, 90. You substitute any value such that some of those triangles must be equal to 180 degree. That you have to take care. Okay. So now let's go to complex numbers, which is question number 41. Okay, 41. The value of uh, 1 plus i whole power 6 uh, plus 1 minus i whole power 6. This 1 plus i whole power 6, uh, I'll write as 1 plus i whole square, then whole cube. Okay, similarly, 1 minus i whole square, whole cube. This whole power 6, uh, I'm writing it as whole square and then whole cube. 1 plus i whole square. Expand it by using a plus b whole square. a square, that is 1, plus b square. b square means i square plus 2ab. That will give you 2i whole cube. Plus, similarly here, 1 plus i square minus 2i whole cube. You know the value of i square. What is the value of i square? Can anybody tell me what is i square? Yes, you're right, minus 1. i square is minus 1. So 1 minus 1, those two gets cancelled. So you will have 2i whole cube plus, here also these two gets cancelled, minus 2i whole cube. So this will give you 8i cube and this will give you minus 8i cube. These two gets cancelled. Hence the answer is 0. First option is the right answer. Now we want the modulus of this question. Question number 43. The modulus of root 3 plus i by 1 plus i into 1 plus root 3 i. So what is modulus of x plus i y? So if uh, z is equal to x plus i y, then modulus of z is equal to root of x square plus y square is the formula. Then one more property we know, that is, if you have z1, z2 by z3, z4, z5, if you want to find the modulus of this, modulus of this, this will be equal to mod z1 into mod z2 divided by mod z3 into mod z4 into mod z5. You can directly, you can separately find that modulus, then multiply and divide. So the modulus of this will be modulus of root 3 plus i divided by modulus of 1 plus i into modulus of 1 plus root 3 i. That's equal to numerator. Mod z is defined as root of, if z is x plus i, y, its modulus is defined as root of x square plus y square. 
So here you are going to get root of x square, that is 3 plus y square, which is 1, divided by root of 1 plus 1 and the root of 1 plus 3. So root of 1 plus 3 is root 4, which is 2. Here root 2 into 2, root 2, 2 gets cancelled. So 1 by root 2 is the answer. 1 by root 2 is the answer, which is the fourth option. Now, next question. If pi by 2 and pi by 4 are the arguments, arguments is nothing but the amplitude of z1 and z2 bar respectively, then argument of z1 by z2. Okay. So here are two things you need to know that is if argument of z is equal to theta, then argument of z bar, that is the conjugate of z. If z is x plus i y, z bar will be equal to x minus i y. Then if argument of z is theta, then the argument of z bar will be equal to minus theta. This is one formula you need to know. And one more formula is, though it is not relevant in this case, but just I'll give you, argument of z1, z2 is equal to argument of z1 plus argument of z2. For this problem, it is not necessary, but you need to know, remember this formula. Another formula which is necessary here is argument of z1 by z2 that's equal to argument of z1 minus argument of z2. Oh. So this is what we are asked to find out. What is argument of z1? Given that argument of z1, what they have given? Argument of z1 is equal to pi by 2. And then they have given that argument of z2 bar is pi by 4. Okay. Give, read the question carefully. Pi by 2 and pi by 4 are the arguments of z1 and z2 bar respectively. So, argument of z2 bar is pi by 4. Hence, argument of z2 will be negative of this, which is minus pi by 4. Okay, substitute now. Argument of z1 is pi by 2 minus argument of z2 is minus pi by 4. So, we are going to get pi by 2 plus pi by 4, which is equal to 3 pi by 4. 3 pi by 4, first option is the right answer. So here we have the 46th question that is 3 plus 5 omega. I will write 3 omega square first plus 5 omega whole power 6. Okay. See, 1 omega and omega square are called the cube roots of unity. Cube roots of unity means the roots of this equation, x cube equal to 1, are called cube roots of unity. They are 1 omega and omega square where the value of omega is minus 1 plus i root 3 by 2 and omega square is minus 1 minus i root 3 by 2. Remember these two things. Then some of two of its properties are 1 plus omega plus omega square equal to 0 and omega cube is equal to 1. These two are two very important formulas. 1 plus omega plus omega square equal to 0 and omega square omega cube is equal to 1. Okay. So remember these two. Very important. These two formula. Okay. Now coming back to this problem. 3 plus 3 omega square plus I wrote this 3 omega square and then 5 omega. Here, I will take 3 as common, 3 into 1 plus omega square plus 5 omega whole power 6. 1 plus omega square can be written as minus omega, right? Look at this, 1 plus omega plus omega square is 0. So, from this 1 plus omega square can be written as minus omega. So, 3 into minus omega plus 5 omega whole power 6. So, this is minus 3 omega plus 5 omega, that will give you 2 omega whole power 6. That's equal to 2 power 6 into omega power 6. 2 power 6 is 64 and omega power 6 is 1 only because omega cube is 1. Omega power 6 is nothing but omega cube whole square. So, 1 square that will be equal to 1. So, the answer is 64 which is the fourth option. Okay. Then, after uh, this, okay. here we have 49th question. If 1 plus i by 1 minus i whole power m is equal to 1, then the least positive integral value of m is first uh, let me simplify this 1 plus i by 1 minus i i will multiply and divide by 
one plus i later on i will raise to the power m afterwards okay i'm multiplying and dividing by one plus i so what happens to the numerator one plus i whole square denominator a minus b into a plus b that is a square minus b square okay expand this a square plus b square plus 2 ab divided by here one square is one i square is minus one so minus of minus will become plus one. and meanwhile here i square will be numerator i square is minus one so one minus one that gets cancelled you will have two i in the numerator and two in the denominator two two gets cancelled we get i so this we have simplified that one plus i by one minus i is equal to i so now you have i to the power m is equal to one this equation given equation will now become i power m is equal to one for what value of m i power m will be equal to one m must be equal to four i power four equal to one as you know i is equal to root of minus one I suppose you know all these things. I is root of minus one. I square is minus one. I cube is i square into i, which becomes minus i, and i power four is equal to one. Okay, that's the answer. Four is the answer, which is the second option. Okay, look at question number fifty-one now. Fifty-one. If z is equal to x plus i y, then the equation mod z plus one by z minus one represents. Okay, let me write uh, what is z. Z is x plus i y. I'll substitute there. So x plus i y plus one modulus of that is equal to x plus i y minus one. So I can write this as I'll group the real parts together. X plus one plus i y is equal to x minus one modulus of x minus one plus i y. Okay. Now it's modulus. Modulus of x plus i y is root of x square plus y square. So modulus of this complex number would be x plus root of x plus one whole square plus y square. Okay. So here uh, we are going to get uh, root of x plus one whole square plus y square is equal to square root of x minus one whole square plus y square. Squaring this will give you x plus one whole square plus y square is equal to x minus one whole square plus y square. Okay, so y square y square gets cancelled. Expand this x square plus two x plus one is equal to x square minus two x plus one. X square plus one gets cancelled. Bring that two x to this side. Two x plus two x that will give you four x is equal to zero. Which means x equal to zero. X equal to zero. This is the equation of y-axis. So y-axis is the answer. Third option. Okay. So for this, I'll give you one more uh, idea. That is one more formula. Z minus modulus of z minus z one by z minus z two is equal to one. Represents the perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector of the line joining z one and z two. Remember this. It's a formula. Z minus z one by z minus z two. If modulus of that is equal to one, then uh, that represents the perpendicular bisector of the line joining z one and z two. So in this case, mod z minus one, I will take it to LHS. So then you are going to get modulus of z plus one by z minus one is equal to one. If I compare with the mod of z minus z one by z minus z two is equal to one, I am going to get z one is equal to minus one, and z two is equal to one. Minus one can be written as minus one plus i into zero, and uh, uh, one can be written as one plus i into zero. So actually, in terms of uh, ordered pair. It is representing minus the point minus one comma zero and one comma zero. So what it tells you is that this gives you the perpendicular bisector of the line joining minus one zero and one zero. Let me draw the x-axis and the y-axis, the coordinate axis. Okay. So here minus one zero, minus one zero is here. One zero is here. The perpendicular bisector of the line joining these two is nothing but y-axis itself. Okay, 
y axis is a perpendicular bisector of the line joining these two. So that's the answer. In that way, also we can answer this question. Okay, 54th question. This is from quadratic equation. If one root of the equation x square plus px plus 12 equal to 0 is 4, while the equation x square plus uh, px plus q equal to 0 has equal roots, then the value of q is. So one root of the first equation, x square plus px plus 12 equal to 0, one of its roots is 4. So 4 should satisfy this equation, substitute we get 16 plus 4p plus 12 is equal to 0. So 4p plus 28 equal to 0, 4p equal to minus 28, and p is equal to minus 7. Okay. Now, this, the other equation, what is that? x square plus px, in place of p, I will substitute minus 7, minus 7x plus q equal to 0. It has equal roots. If it, if the root quadratic equation has equal roots, then what should be the value of delta? Delta must be equal to 0. So b square minus 4ac must be equal to 0. So b square in this case is 49 minus 4ac, that is 4q equal to 0. In other words, 4q is equal to 49 and q is equal to 49 divided by 4. 49 by 4, which is the first option. Okay. Look at question number 60, the last question of the day. The equation whose roots are reciprocal of the roots of the equation. Okay. So here we have an equation 3x square minus 20x plus 17 equal to 0. We want another equation whose roots are the reciprocal of the roots of this equation. So to get that, what we need to do is change x to 1 by x. Wherever there is x, you replace it by 1 by x. So this will become 3 into 1 by x square minus 20 into 1 by x plus 17 is equal to x. Okay. Now I'll multiply this equation with x square. When I multiply by x square, I'm going to get 3 minus. Here, if I multiply by x square, one of those x gets cancelled. Other x will remain minus 20x plus 17x square is equal to 0, okay? That is 17x square minus 20x plus 3 is equal to 0, okay? So that is the answer, 17x square minus 20x plus 3 equal to 0. Second option is the correct answer. Okay, okay students, with this, I will stop today's class. And uh, students, there is a lot of discussion going on in the news channels and in the newspapers about the cancellation of uh, PU exams. Okay, Since already for uh, CBSC board, they have canceled the uh, board examination of 12th standard. Okay. So now you may be thinking or maybe hoping that uh, it will be canceled. I don't know whether it will be canceled or not. So uh, nothing officially, they have not announced it but that uh, PU exams, state board exams are cancelled or not. See whether they cancel it or not. NEET exams, JE mains exams, CT exams, definitely they are going to continue. So my advice for you is don't worry about board exams. As of now, you concentrate only on CT, NEET or JE mains, whichever you want. So you concentrate on that. Definitely those exams will be conducted because for all the professional courses, they do uh, conduct uh, these entrance exams. It's definitely will be there. When, uh, how, which mode, not sure, I'm not decided yet, but definitely all those exams will be con conducted. And PA exams, I don't know because nobody knows as of now. So they'll announce, announce it in a few days whether they're going to conduct or not. But uh, uh, whatever happens, definitely uh, all the entrance examinations will be there. So prepare yourself seriously for all these entrance examinations. Thank you.